Welcome to Father's Heart tonight. It's so great to have you guys with us. And tonight we're doing a general teaching. So I want you just to relax tonight, take a cup of coffee, sit down. Let's just uh, feast around God's word and trust Him for a mighty touch of His Spirit. And I'm believing God even for miracles tonight. That there are people that will be out there that are finding themselves in a place of need. And God wants to show Himself true. God wants to show Himself strong. And He's going to touch your physical body. I'm trusting God that right in front already, that people that might have some kind of physical affliction tonight, God will touch you and heal you and make you whole before Him. You know, we're going into a season of revival. I believe that's a revival breaking out around the whole world. You're looking all over the place and you see little fires already starting to to spark up and to light up. And I believe it's a sign of the time. And that we're going to continue seeing more and more of that happen. And it's for us to actually just embrace, run after God, pull, pull into the very presence of God, become hungry and thirsty for Him and allow Him to work in us. So tonight... For those that do not know me, I'm Pastor Leslie Hessel, and tonight's message has been titled, The God of the Possible. You know, I know a lot of people teach and preach about the God of the impossible, but I thought I'll spin that one tonight and say, let's talk about the God of the possible. And to God, everything is possible. So before we get into too too much depth here, and before we go anywhere, let's just commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to Spend time with you, Lord. Father God, tonight we just want to love you. We just want to embrace you. Father God, we want to just pull close to you. Father, it's so close that we can even feel your breath on our skin. And Father God, we want to hear your heartbeat. We want to hear exactly, Father, what your passion is, Lord. That you will whisper in our ears that deep secrets, Father God, that you have. We know that the Holy Spirit fathoms your depths to reveal you to your children. So Father God, we thank you. Let us see another aspect, another another view, another facet of who you are tonight. And Lord, show yourself real in the lives of people. Father, I'm trusting you to touch people tonight in their bodies, in their circumstances, in their situations. And Father God, to show yourself real to them, that they do not just know about you, but they'll know you, Lord. So we give you all the glory, honor, and the praise in advance for everything that will be accomplished tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad there's more people that have joined us. It's so good for you to have you guys with us. And tonight, as I said, we are titling this message, God of the Possible. My foundation scripture and opening scripture tonight, the second Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 9. Nice scripture. I love this verse. It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Get that picture in your mind. Yeah, God sits in heaven, looks down to earth, and he's, he's, he's watching. He's His eyes are running to and fro over the earth, looking all over the earth. What for? To show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. So here God is looking at the earth. His eyes are going to and fro over the earth. He's doing it because he's looking for people who are loyal to him, that he can show himself strong through or to rather those people. And that to me is an awesome picture because it means that my father cares so much that he's actually looking at loyalty. He's looking at people that are, whose heart is for him. He, he, he's not looking at your, 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 your conduct and the way that you're going about things. He's not looking at, at how busy or not busy you are. He's not looking at any of that stuff. What he's looking for is loyalty. He's looking for those people whose hearts are loyal to him. In other words, he means everything to you. you he, you're not prepared to compromise on anything that has to do with God. You're not prepared to sell Him out, uh, to be all half-hearted about your conduct and the way you pursue Him and go after Him. <coughs> Excuse me, but your heart is for Him. You want to go after Him with every single fiber of your being. You want to show yourself loyal to Him. You're not sharing Him with anybody else. You're not... Not being the harlot and then half the time, yeah, half the time there, then doing this, then doing that. No, you are loyal. You are sold out to him. So he's watching. He's looking to see. And those people that are loyal, why? So that he can show himself strong. So God wants to bless you. If you're loyal, he wants to bless you. If you're for him, he wants to bless you. If you're the one that you, that you are the apple of his eye, he wants to bless you. He wants to pursue you. He wants to go after you. And he wants to pour out love on you like you can't even imagine. 
He wants to embrace you. He wants to pursue you. He wants to show himself strong in your life. He wants to deliver you, set you free. That's why I said to you tonight, I'm expecting miracles. I'm expecting God to break people free as they realize that God loves them in a way that they can't even imagine, that God wants to show himself strong for them. And all he needs you to do is to be loyal to him. So don't compromise. Don't play the harlot. Don't share him with anybody else. Don't don't have one thing yeah that you pursue and passionate about and another thing over there no it's god and god only and you pursue him with all your every fiber of your being you're hungry and thirsty for him to live for him in every which way you can and you will not do anything but that the minute that you make that adjustment inside your heart and spirit to be loyal to him and not to compromise on him in any way then he says he wants to show him so strong he wants to show him so strong in your life so he wants to set you free from shackles, from burdens. He wants to provide for you, break you out of the strongholds and the, and, and, and the uh, strongholds that you've got in your life, the places that are holding you captive. He wants to break you out of every single one of those so that he can show himself faithful to you, strong, courageous to you. And then he says, in this you have done foolishly. Therefore from now on you shall have wars. And that is like but if you're not if you're not faithful to God, and you are you've made a commitment to Him, you accept Him into your heart, and now you are playing the harlot, you're being the Bible says you are being very foolish. And it says as a result of that foolishness, because you are pulling away from God, you are not sold out to Him, you are not 100% committed. He says therefore from now on you shall have wars. And you know, we all love to believe that, that, and it's true, we are redeemed from the curse of the law, no doubt. The book of Galatians tells us that, and I understand that, and I believe that. But at the end of the day, God is still God. And at the end of the day, He will not share you with anybody. You are the apple of His eye. You are the one that He went to the cross and died for. Remember, Jesus would have gone to the cross, I believe, even if it was just for you. We had our base that story on. It's also from Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot. Where God was prepared to, one righteous person, I'm sure if, if Abraham asked for that, then God would have saved the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. But at the end of the day, I believe that if you were the only person, Jesus would have still come because of his love for us as people. And God is no respecter of persons. So therefore, we need to pursue him and, and go in with every single fiber of our being. So, for God, you are precious. For God, you are of value. For God, He wants to see you. If you are loyal, He is going to push and He's going to self him, uh, show Himself strong. And all He wants you to do is just say, Lord, you, I am yours. Father, help me. You know, with David, the story of David, if you go and look at it, David wasn't perfect. God's not asking for perfection. Nowhere in Scripture does He says we strive towards perfection, yes, but He's not asking for perfection. We strive towards holiness, yes, but he doesn't ask for us to come to him and already holy. So when you and I come to God, we are coming in as we are. He wants you as you are. No different, no nothing special as you are. Because he will do the work inside of you. As you surrender to him and to the Holy Spirit, he will start shaping you, forming you, making you into the image that, that he wants you to be, into the person that he has made you to be. He will unlock full destiny and purpose within your heart and in your life and everything that you do. He will do that. That's, that's, I've got absolutely no doubt about. So he will do that and he'll get us into that place that we need to be. So in that process, which is a process, he's not looking for perfection. All right. And so therefore we fall. David fell. David fell a couple of times and he fell horribly. And when he fell, he went for another man's wife. He put the man in the front lines of the war, caused him to, to, to be killed. And as a result, he basically took over his, his wife and most probably the rest of his family. And as a result of that, um, God was not well pleased because now suddenly he had blood on his hands. And because of that, um, there were consequences. And, and the consequences he had to bear, and the consequences were that, that he was wanting to build the temple for the Lord and he couldn't. And uh, God would not allow him to. And only um, Solomon was able to do that in the end. But David then made a commitment and said, oh, well, if, you, if, if I can't build it, I'll pay for it. So he made provision and made sure the provision was there for the temple to be able to be built. 
And so even today, I mean, you know, if you commit adultery and you're in a place where, you know, you've done that and the, and there's a baby and there's a child, that's a consequence. You can't you can't make it go away. That's that's basically the result. And so so you've got to be careful of that. You've got to be you've got to live for God, but God's not looking for perfection. He didn't look for perfection with David, even though he called him man over his own after his own heart. So so God wants you to be to go after him with everything. Now there's many verses that if God wants to show himself strong in your life, I wasn't going to focus on that and say everything I've said up until now, but God, I wanted to focus on God wants to show himself strong in your life. So, but God wanted to show himself strong. Now, I want to give you quite a, lot, quite a few scriptures here. Matthew 17, 20, okay? It says nothing will be impossible to him, to God. Matthew nineteen twenty six says this, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Mark 10, 27, when this is impossible, but not with God. Remember in verse 19, Matthew 19, 26, that's where I got the title from, but with God, all things are possible. He is the God of the possible. All right. So then in Luke 1, 37, it says, with God, nothing will be impossible. In Luke 18, 27, it says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. So there is five scriptures already that are telling me that with God, everything is possible. With God, nothing is impossible. Why? Because God makes everything. He speaks a word. It makes it happens. It, it shapes up in your life and it manifests and it happens. All right. So God will cause the impossible to become possible. So now the question is at the end of the day, how do you and I get what the God of the possible does into my life? That is really the question at the end of the day. Because I think everybody that's watching me tonight and listening to me tonight, you will agree that with God, nothing is impossible. With God, everything is possible. He is the God of the possible. He has no limitation. He has no inability, so to speak. So God is God. And therefore, we need to understand that. So you will most probably say to me, yes, Pastor Les, I, I, I agree with you. There's a mental assent. There's an affirmation. There's agreement. God is the God of the possible. But that is meaningless to me, absolute meaningless to me, if it does not manifest in my life. And I cannot draw the benefit from that by serving God. So the key must be, how do I draw the from God everything into my life? Now the first thing I want you to notice in the, in the verse that we opened up with, in Second Chronicles 69, that he wants to show himself strong. So you need to come to the understanding that God is for you and not against you. Because you are loyal to him and because he loves you, he wants to show himself strong in your life. And so from God's side, there is absolutely no limitation. There is no holding back. I want you to understand, God is not trying to punish you in any way. <coughs> God disciplines his children but he does not punish his children, does not withhold any good gift from you and I. Every good and perfect gift is from the Father above. All right? So I want you to understand that first and foremost. His way of disciplining us is not by withholding stuff from us. That's not God's way of dealing with his children. He deals with his children through conviction, through showing the, you the wrong, getting you to repent about it. That's the way he operates. By showing us love and allowing us to respond to his love. Okay. He is a God of grace. His grace abounds to us. We have unmerited favor, unlimited favor with God and through God. So God wants to show himself strong to those that are loyal to him, that he, that follow him. So we need to understand that from God's point of view, he wants to bless you. He wants to love you. He wants to express himself to you in every way possible to Demonstrate and show his love to you. Then we see in Mark chapter 9 and verse 23, another very interesting verse. Jesus said to him, If you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to him who believes. So first we know that God is strong. 
that he wants to show himself faithful in our lives. We know that with God, all things are possible. There's no limitation in the Son, nothing in him that he cannot do or that he does not want to do or that it's impossible. To God, all things are possible. So third then, we have to believe. Now, I cannot emphasize how important trust and believing in God is. There's only one thing that's going to keep you and I, you and I out of heaven, and that's unbelief. Why? Because sin has already been dealt with. Jesus dealt with sin on the cross once and for all. God laid the sin of the world upon him and he carried upon him and he dealt and he took the, he took the punishment of sin upon himself and he paid the price. He did what needed to be done to deal with sin. So sin is no longer the issue. Sin cannot keep you and I out of heaven at all. All right. Jesus annihilated that thing. What will keep you out of heaven is unbelief. Because when you don't believe that Jesus accomplished the task and did what he did perfectly and well and completely, that's what's going to with your old you and hell and keep you out of, out of God's presence and out of, the, out of, out of heaven. So we have to believe that with God all things are possible. Hebrews, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. And he who comes to God and believes that he exists and is a reward of those diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the things of evidence of things not seen. So we need to understand that we have to invoke and activate our faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. We need to develop that faith and grow that faith by be- becoming, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we, so we get the word of God into us. And as we meditate on that word day and night, according to Psalm 1, 3 and Joshua 1, 8, we, we allow that word to just come and just, just work inside of us and to just do that which it does best as it starts building faith and in praying, praying up in, your Holy, in the Holy Spirit builds up your most holy faith in Jude 20. We do that. We do these things to allow the faith of God, in God to grow and to develop in us and to allow us to draw that which heaven has for us into our lives. So if we want to see the very power of God manifest in our lives, we have to release our faith and we have to start speaking and, and declaring our faith in God. Now there's a, there's a nice scripture in, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11 through 13, which says that, not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's Paul speaking at, to the Philippian church or the churches in Philippi. I know both how to abase and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things am structured, sorry, am instructed both to be full and be, ang- be angry, but both to abound and to suffer need. So therefore, all he's saying, he's saying, listen, like, guys, it doesn't matter what state I find myself in. I'm happy. I've learned to be happy when I've got a lot. I've learned to be happy when I've got nothing um, because I know God is my source. And then in verse 13 is where I wanted to get to. It says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So, your faith in God is what makes things possible in your life. And by believing God, you are drawing the very presence and power of God into your life. And by faith, you're now allowing that to start working. So now, yeah, in verse 13 of Philippians chapter 4, it tells me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I can, therefore, there is nothing that is beyond me. There is nothing that I cannot accomplish. Why? Because it's not done in my strength or my ability. I'm doing it in faith in God. So therefore, I need to believe that there is no limitation as to what I can accomplish. There is absolutely none. Because God in me, Christ in me, allows me to go beyond my physical and natural limitations. Because He is the one that strengthens me. He is the one that enables me and gives me the ability to move forward. So I now believe that God is for me. He wants to show Himself strong in my life. I am loyal to Him, which is a done deal. I've got no doubt about that. And now I know that I have released my faith for Him to do what He does. And therefore, everything becomes possible to me. And now He strengthens me so that I can continue and do the stuff that I need to do. So He now guides me and directs me in what I need to do. Then we have to understand that we have to now start sorting out the way we speak. 
Because the Bible talks to me about, I speak from the abundance of my heart. It's from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. You won't realize how important your words are. Mark 11, 23, 24, the Bible says, have faith in God in verse 22. Then it says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast, and she shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says will come to pass. The words you are declaring and speaking will happen. It will come to pass. It will happen. When you believe that, your speech becomes critical. And that lines up with John, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, which talks about the fact that, that if we believe God, is this, or Jesus is the Son of God, we will be born again when we declare it and speak it, all right? And our words come out of our mouth. It talks about, the Bible talks about holding fast to your confession or profession of faith. You have to speak that which you believe. Like God spoke words to form and shape this world, everything in the natural happens and is manifested by a spoken word. That's where it starts. All right, that's where it starts happening, is when people start speaking it, start declaring it, then actions and deeds start following it, and ultimately it manifests. So you need to understand that you have to start declaring and speaking that which you believe. I believe that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed, and therefore any sickness that tries to attach itself to my body, in Jesus' name has to, sub has to, has to abort and disappear and go away because... By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I am healthy. I walk in perfect health. And therefore, when sickness comes to try and attach itself to me, it is trying to rob me of my health. The devil cannot steal my health. God gave it to me. It's mine. And I'm not going to release or let it go. I have perfect health. So therefore, take your filthy, dirty hands off me. That's how you need to speak. Because you bring yourself into agreement and in line with the word of God. And you start filling your mouth with that which you believe in your heart. And from the abundance of the heart, the mouth then starts declaring and starts speaking. And that is how you start drawing the very presence and power of God into your lives to do the things that you need to do. Money. Money. You speak to money. You say, money come forth in Jesus' name. Devil, take your filthy hands off my money. There's no money in heaven. God doesn't need money. He just speaks stuff into these streets of gold. The money is here on earth. So just call it forth in Jesus' name. Say in Jesus' name, finance is coming. Rent, you need to come. Devil, take your hands off my money. Father, will you allow your angels to go and to commission them and direct them to, to cause those people that, that are withholding my money to release it and let it go in Jesus' name? And start receiving the finances into your life. Because, look, you need to be obedient to work. Be generous, the Bible says. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking gear, and running over shall men given to your bosom. So you need to be obedient to the word of God. Cast your bread on the, on, the, on, on, on the waters, and after many days it will return. It will come back to you. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he has no sorrow. Um, he, wants to be, he wants you to prosper in health, even your soul prospers. Um, and we need to understand that that is the truth that God wants for you and I. And then in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, there's a nice little verse there as well. It says, if you're obedient, sorry, willing and obedient, you will eat of the fat of the land. You know, I know very many, a lot of people that are obedient. They do the will of God. They do what, what He wants them to do. But sometimes it's grudgingly. It's not out of a joyous heart or a heart to please God or a heart to be obedient to the Spirit of the Lord. And because that of that, they're obedient, but they're not necessarily willing. And the, I heard Kenneth Hagin one time give a testimony of how he, the, he had to adjust his attitude and his heart. He said, Lord, I'm, I acknowledge I'm obedient, but I must be honest, sometimes I'm not willing. I'm doing it with a grudging heart. And that's just a little tweak inside your spirit, inside your heart. To say, Lord, from now on, from going forward, I commit, I will be willing and obedient. I will do everything out of a passion to fulfill your desire, to see your kingdom grow, and to see your will established and done on this earth. So that way, it just takes a small little tweak inside your spirit, and you can become willing and obedient. So, so we need to be loyal to God. It comes back to the fact that we need to be loyal to God, and our heart has to be for Him. We're not... We don't have a split loyalty. We don't follow two streams or two paths. That's double-mindedness. And the Bible says when you're double-minded, you're unstable in all your ways. And, and so that, that is, we're not double-minded. We are single. We are focused. We are after the things of the Lord. We are hunger and thirst um, for Him and who He is. And the, because of that, we pursue Him with every fiber of our being. We're hungry. We are thirsty. 
as the appendix for the water, so my heart, Lord, bends after thee. So I go after God with every single thing of my uh, part of my being. When you start doing that, you can start seeing the hand of God and the power of God move in your life. So tonight I want to encourage you, and I'm going to start wrapping up with this. I want to encourage you to really push into the very presence of God with absolutely everything that you have. Show yourself loyal to the Father by loving Him with every fiber of your being. As you do that, He will start showing Himself strong in your life. Why? Because His eyes are going to and fro over this earth. To see those that are loyal to him so he can show himself strong. And when he does that, he's going to lavish you with his presence, with his power, with his provision. He will pour out upon you that you cannot contain it. Okay. And all he looks for is for you to reciprocate. For you to say thank you, Lord. And you to show, and to show your gratitude and your love towards him. How do we do that? We are generous, we give, we love, we entertain, we are hospitable. We are there for people. We unlock potential. We want to serve just like Christ served. And at the end of the day, we want to see people max out and be everything that God has wanted to be. When you start living a life like that, you will automatically start speaking and declaring it because you're going to speak from the abundance of your heart. You're going to speak from that overflow from the blessing of the Lord, from him lavishing himself out on you. And he's showing himself true in your life. And as he does that, you're going to start walking in, in absolutely everything that God has for you. It's not a difficult thing. It's not a intricate thing. It's a loyal thing. <laughs> the thing is pursuing God with every fiber of your being. And he will show himself true in your heart. You can, as homework, go and read Ephesians chapter 3. Um, go and read from verses around about 16 through to the end of the chapter. Um, do it in an amplified Bible. It's a little bit more descriptive. And you'll see that he wants to do exceedingly far above what you can ever dream or school think. Once you start fathoming his love and understanding his love and understanding how lavish he wants to be in your life, you'll see his hand move. So until next time. May the Lord richly bless you. Have an awesome evening.